Some crew members are causing a distress. In orbit. Here we go. I haven't set foot in here since. Well, I'm ready. Well, this is the spot. You know, I thought I'd be angry. I thought I'd storm in here in a rage and exterminate all these bugs and everything would be all right in the end. But I ain't. I'm mostly just empty. A little sad, maybe. The first night Hayes and I spent in here, we knew it was home. It's safe. It's got a nice chill to it. But mostly, it doesn't stink of sulfur. Monarch folks often joke about it. Not because of the smell or the grittiness it leaves in your throat. Not because of the headaches or the coughing. It's because there's no escaping it. It's life here, and there ain't anything you can do about it. But here, somehow the sulfur never made it. The nights we spent in here felt like vacations. So we started building. We hauled in steel, hired sublight folk to help. That's how we met Anders and Opal. They stuck around after our contract was up. Opal liked camping. Anders liked chasing her tail. Four of us for a while, scraping together what bits we could to build our home. Then came Rebecca, a sawbones out of the Cascadia survivors, who took a kindness to Hayes. And Clara, her little sister. I'll admit I wasn't keen on taking her on at first, but for a teenager, she was surprisingly capable. More like attached at the hip to her older sister. Got a kind of strength between them, I suppose. She had a head for numbers, helped us trade hides for food and materials, negotiated contracts, turned out to be mighty useful. Clara, Hayes, Anders, Rebecca, Opal, and me. Six folks, one name, one family, Charon. Despite Monarch trying to kill us day in and day out, we managed to belong. Me too, Captain. But... I'm starting to think that maybe I found another. Now let's get to shooting before I get all sentimental. Heads up, boss!
I wish these were more auspicious circumstances, but at least we're all here. This bringing them together, burying them. This is the kind of thing Hayes would have done. That makes it stupid. By all accounts, we should have left well enough alone, but that also makes it right. Captain, thank you. You mind if we rest a spell before we head out? I'd, I'd like to bury Opal and Clara proper before I lay everyone's medallions to rest. What? Why? Them's painful memories, Captain. Huh. That's... That ain't a bad point. All right, Captain. Thanks. Make it look so easy.
Welcome to Terra One, the most Earth-like world in Halcyon. Take a moment to admire the triumph of civilization over nature. And while you're at it, say hello to the local settlers. We hope you've enjoyed this guided tour across the wonders of Halcyon. Please return to the Bureau of Exploration for a special prize. Crew report. Nioka is drunk. Surprise. We've reached HRS-1084, Captain. It's emitting a very weak docking signal. I almost mislabeled it as normal etheric static. Take someone to watch over. Why is the grave in here? We should get the power generator going again. Might cheer up the place.
Captain, I've been attempting to contact you with urgent news. However, communicational functionality was impaired due to the power outage. A UDL vessel has been tracking our position and just recently docked with the station. They are patching into the station's transmission lines now. I cannot stop... I've been waiting for this day since we tagged your ship in Cascadia, Captain. So glad you've been poking your nose into restricted locations. This makes my superiors unhappy. I could peel your ship open like a can of forest. But I'm in a sporting mood. Sublight? Ugh. I hate it when you outlaws organize. The paperwork for killing you would be the death of me. Don't apologize. This is my problem, not yours. Squad, I'm ordering a recall. There's a misspelling on orders that ought to be corrected. On the double. The UDL gunship is undocking from the station. They appear to be departing into space. That was rather impressive, Captain. Diplomacy at its finest. Keep a sharp eye out, Captain. One wrong step could incapacitate or kill.
Job done. We can go home to the ship, right? I've been missing Ada fierce. Hold on, Tick. Don't we know Chartran? From Cascadia? Captain, if you're looking for crew members Ellie or Felix, they're sharing a drink upstairs. Destination reached, the Groundbreaker. Finally, a base of our own. Soon we'll have eyes on every corner of the system. Well done, Captain. I heard about that. While my lawyers scratch their heads wondering how we deal with human salvage, I'm leaving the researchers in hibernation. Aside from the automated security, did you meet any resistance at the station? <sighs> I knew it. They've been shadowing us since Monarch, maybe even longer. I've been less than honest with you. Your assignments weren't strictly about the salvage business. You might have figured that out already. You have an eye for patterns. Good. We need more contractors like you. After the Monarch job, I started connecting the dots. 
I didn't like the picture. Then what we found at Station 1084 confirmed my fears. You and I have stumbled onto something big, something none of us were meant to know. Maybe the worst. Ask yourself why a skeleton crew was studying that Alta Vitae gas in secret. Ask yourself why stockpiles were hidden on a planet full of monsters. Before we go any further, I want you to keep an open mind. Can you do that for me, Captain? Aliens. I'm talking about aliens. They're the ones responsible for the deaths at 1084, and who knows what else. We have to put a stop to it. I knew it. Aliens from other worlds been visiting Halcyon. At least one of your crew can keep an open mind. But this isn't some Aetherwave serial, Millstone. This is reality. Hear me out. I'm saying it's aliens. I'm not asking you to like it. I'm not even asking you to believe it. But I need to act on this threat to the colony, and I can't do it alone. This doesn't feel at all right, Captain. Damn, she's serious. Tragic, ain't it? What age does to your mental faculties? The crew is skeptical. That's good. I don't want you walking into the unknown with blindfolds on. I assume you have questions? If we're gonna see this through, I'll need your trust and commitment. Now's the time for setting doubts aside. Dr. Chartrand is the crooked psychopath behind the gas experiments. She sold out her species, and I need you to put a bullet through her skull. You don't even want to know why for? This keycard will get you through the front door of her Byzantium estate. Don't ask how I got it. You might not like the answer. By now, the other side knows what you're doing. Don't trust anything Chartrand says. She's compromised down to the bone. Maybe even deeper than that. Is it done? I see. If you need directions to Byzantium, it's the big fancy one. Can't miss it. She's a traitor to her species. I'll rest easy once I know she's dead. Easier, anyway. She's a research scientist and a damn good one. Before UDL poached her, she engineered a 0.2% increase in cysty pig juiciness. Now she's doing the same thing with humanity. Her fingerprints were all over Station 1084. You saw what she did to her team. They've got me all wrong. I just want to add savior of humanity to my resume. Do you usually come across innocent people trapped in suspension tanks? Because some of us would call that excessive. Remember, the tanks were just the shit she left behind. Just imagine the experiments she carted off to her next lab. We're far beyond theories. Chartrand's logs, the gas, the suspension tanks, how much proof do you need? Wake up, Captain. An invasion needs collaborators working from the shadows. She has access to the board, unlimited funds, and a colony full of sheep. I'm on a low-patience, high-stress diet at the moment, Captain. What is it? 